Okay, so we're going to start chapter four now, and we're going to look at functions and their inverses. And essentially, in a previous section, we talked about composition of functions. When we had something like f of x equals x plus 2, g of x equals 2x minus 1. And then we worked on the composition, where we did things like f circle g of x and g circle f of x. You guys did this on a previous exam. We're going to kind of expand on that today and look at some special cases. So suppose we have f of x equals x minus 2 over 4, and g of x equals 4x plus 2. We want to do the composition on those. So just really quickly, because we know how to do this, if we do f circle g of x, we get f of g of x, which by definition is f of, replace g of x with g of x, 4x plus 2. Now take f of that. f takes whatever you plug in, subtracts 2 from it, and then divides it by 4. And if we do that, 2 minus 2 cancels, we get 4x over 4, the 4 is canceled, and we just get x, which is what we started with. I'm not going to take the time to do the algebra right now, but as it turns out, if you do g circle f of x, you get the same thing, x. And essentially the idea here is, for, any, for either of these functions, we start with x, we do something to it, we do something else to it, and we end up right back at x. We end up right back where we started. In math, when that happens, we say these functions are inverses of one another. So essentially, g is the inverse of f if f circle g of x equals g circle f of x equals x. If that happens, they're inverses. If you get anything other than x, they're not inverses. There's another way to write this. You can also say then that g of x equals f raised to the negative 1 power of x. It's not actually an exponent. It's just a notation we use for inverses. So don't get confused by that. As far as it goes then, um, given any two functions, if you want to know if they're inverses, just do the composition. So if we have f of x equals x plus 4, and g of x equals the square root of x minus 1, if you want to know if they're inverses, just do the composition. f circle g of x is f of g of x equals f of g of x, which is square root of x minus 1. And then when you apply that to f, let's see, you get the square root of x minus 1 plus 4. That's clearly not x, so they're clearly not inverses of one another. And for your homework, you're going to do a bunch of these. Essentially, it's algebra practice. Do the composition, see if you get x. If you do, they're inverses. If you don't, they're not. The other thing we can do is actually look to see if we can find the inverse of a function. So there's a whole principle of math called one-to-one -one functions, and only one-to-one -one functions have inverses. And there's a test for it. It's not really relevant to what we're doing. So we can kind of not worry about that. And essentially, we'll only look at functions that are one-to-one. -one. But then, suppose we have a function, say, f of x equals 3x plus 5, right there. That is one-to-one. -one. Again, it's mathematical property. Don't worry about it. It is one-to-one. -one. I want to be able to find the inverse of it if it is one-to-one. -one. And there's an algebraic trick to do it. Essentially, we all know we can replace f of x with y, so that becomes y equals 3x plus 5. And since inverses essentially go forwards and backwards, they turn x to y and then y to x, to find them, flip the x and the y. So rewrite this, and it becomes x equals 3y plus 5. Literally, just flip your x's and your y's. They change places. 
Now solve this for y. Uh, subtract the 5. So you get x minus 5 equals 3y. Divide the 3. And you get y equals x minus 5 over 3. That's your inverse. If you wanted to check it really quickly, we'll just do the composition. You get f circle g of x. That's f of g of x. Let's see, we just said this is my inverse right here. So that's f of x minus 5 over 3. And now what does f do? It takes whatever we plug in, multiplies it by 3, and then adds 5. Here, the 3's will cancel because they're multiplied. And I get x minus 5 plus 5. Those cancel. And I get x. So it's my inverse. So essentially, if you're given a function and you want to find the inverse, write it out. If it's written out in terms of f of x, write it out with y instead. And then just flip your x's and your y's, do the algebra, and you'll get your inverse. There is a graphical way to see an inverse too, assuming you want to graph them. And it's not really something we're going to do for exams or homework or anything, but the principle is at least helpful. And essentially the idea is, if you have some graph, say this graph right here, that, that's one to one. If you want to find the inverse, you look at the line y equals x the 45 degree angle through the axis. Then you take this graph and reflect it across that line right there, and essentially then you'll get something like that. Those are symmetric mirror images. And then this graph will be the inverse of that graph. The idea being, if this is say the point zero, 01, that's x, that's y. Algebraically, we just flipped our x and our y, so graphically, we could do the same thing. This would be the point 1, 0. So there are different ways to see your inverse. For the purposes of what you're going to do for homework, you'll basically be finding the inverses either by using composition or by using the xy flipping your variables trick. But this is just another thing you can use, and I'll probably point it out a few more times with the stuff we have coming up because it can be helpful with some of the work we're going to do.